Welcome back to The Secret Place, everybody. My name is Ashton. Thank you for joining us here again. Here at The Secret Place, our desire is to grow in intimacy with God, our Father, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So if you're looking to grow in intimacy, you've joined us at the right place. This is your first time. We thank you for tuning in with us. If you're back again, thank you for coming back and coming to see what the Lord is doing here in The Secret Place. So as you've been watching the past couple of weeks, we are really we're really going at these divine nine organizations, trying to debunk some of the, the myths, trying to really expose the truth about the foundations of these organizations so that the children of God can be set free, so that the children of God can know the truth. The scripture says they shall know the truth and the truth shall set them free. So we want to expose the rituals. We want to give you know viewers a true understanding of what these organizations are about what happens to get into these organizations, and then just the culture of these organizations once you get in. And so I've, as I've said the past couple of videos, our purpose here is not to bash the people that are in these organizations, but just to shed light so that the truth can be can be released. And that, you know, once we say the truth, it's up to you what you do with the truth. But as children of God, we are on a mandate to speak and share the truth as it has been revealed to us. So tonight I'm joined with my brothers, Julian and Adrian. They are going to share and talk about their journey of renouncing and denouncing Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. So before we get started in the conversation, I'm going to let Julian go ahead and introduce himself, and then Adrian will go ahead and do the same for us. Sure. Thank you, Ashton. Uh, peace, everyone. Uh, my name is Julian Smart Rimple. Uh, I currently reside in Atlanta, Georgia, um, but I was born in Oakland, California. I actually uh, was able to cross uh, into Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated in spring of 2009. And ever since 2011, uh, I have been uh, denounced and also a renounced member of the Tau Zeta uh, chapter at Kennesaw State University. And that was a part of our charter line uh, at Kennesaw State. So uh, that's a little bit about me. I'm here along with Ashton and Adrian to help uh, just provide more dialogue and more context behind this conversation. And thanks for having me, Ashton. All right. Appreciate you jumping on, bro. Man, what's up, everybody? Um, Adrian Templeton. I appreciate Ashton uh, <clears throat> for the invite, man. Um, like I said, Adrian Templeton. I'm from Dallas, Texas. I pledged into Alpha Phi Alpha in spring, no, in fall of 2001. So I'm old head. Um, I had been a member for 22 years. And uh, man, I just denounced and renounced last year in 2023. Uh, it was official with the headquarters in June, June 26, actually. And but I didn't officially publicly renounce until October. But man, I'm just like like Ashton said, man. I'm just thankful to be able to get on the platform where we can kind of spread the truth, right? Uh, so many of us have been blinded, right? By just deceit and lies and um, falsehoods, right? And we kind of fed into all of that stuff. And there's so many people that are deceived right now. So I just want to be able to do my part, right? And helping to set the captives free. So I appreciate it. Amen. That's the mission to set the captives free. So let's jump into this conversation, brother. So what what led you to Alpha in the first place? Like what, you know, what about, what about Greek life allured you what was it about Alpha that you thought would benefit your life? Go ahead, Julian. Oh, no, go ahead, King. I'll go after you, man. But so, um, actually, no. So, me personally, I didn't have, I didn't grow up with Greek life around me. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't know anybody that was Greek. I, I have some cousins, and some family members that are Greek, but I didn't find out until after I had already pledged. Um, and <clears throat> I really, Honestly, I've always kind of had a sort of a, a desire to belong, right? Um, and quick story, I was molested as a kid, right? And so, and I never said anything to my family. Or, um, I, let, I was molested from from around five or six all the way till around nine or 10, right? From older cousins, uh, both male and female. And uh, yeah, so I just had this kind of, I just wanted to be, I wanted to be normal, right? I would always say in, internally, I just want to be normal. I want to be like everybody else. But I had these things kind of going on. I mean, you know, how do you have tell a kid to kind of wrestle with that, right? So I didn't have an outlet. I didn't feel like I did. But throughout the whole time, the Holy Spirit, you know, I didn't really know the Holy Spirit. I've been in church my entire life, but 
the Holy Spirit kept me throughout all that time, man. <clears throat> but fast forward, um, the concept of fraternity kind of resonated with me. So my best friend in high school, he was a year older than me, so he graduated the year before, and he went to school. He pledged his freshman year. So that was my first introduction into um, Greek life. He pledged Alpha. So I'm like, actually, I was like, I want to be Alpha too. And yeah, man. So when I got to campus, I just I was used to being kind of popular already, just in whatever setting. And so the alphas were like the the, the guys on campus, like they were they were the, the group to be with, right? And so I was like, I can see myself fitting in. So I'm like, bet that's what we're gonna do, you know. And everything, the vibe was good. Uh, and so you know, I was like, hey, this is what we doing? This is what we're gonna rock with. And that was it. Mm -hmm. Got you, got you. All right, Julian. So what what led you to to A Phi A? Um, mainly I grew up in the AUC here in Atlanta. Uh, for those that don't know, Spell Spellman Morehouse, which is Spell House Morris Brown. And um uh, uh, literally had the activity from free babies or early not in Atlanta, but they had also particularly Greek life all in, in your face if you grew up here in Atlanta. And um, I didn't have any mentors uh, that were alphas, uh, but I did uh, have a mentor in high school who was a Kappa. And he uh, was one of the people that literally led me to go to an HBCU by the name of Hampton University, uh, the home by the sea. I call it the real HU. Uh, but Literally, uh, he introduced me uh, to go to Hampton. I went to Hampton. I was able to um, just see on an HBCU's campus the whole Greek life experience and just to see that the alphas, uh, they were always um, running, not the yard at Hampton because the Qs were running the yard, but they were literally running uh, the business of how to be successful as businessmen and entrepreneurs. They were always uh, really classy, always um, had on uh, the best fits, uh, got all the women, uh, got all the girls at Hampton, and even they ran an alpha event that was notoriously known in D.C., Maryland, and Virginia, and even some of the Southeast known as the Alpha Cab, uh, where they had droves of people from all over the Southeast come uh, to Maryland, Virginia, or D.C., and basically have a uh, a dress uh, part, uh, that we called like a black tie affair, which is a cabaret. And uh, they they literally um, introduced me to what it means to be like an alpha man, just from seeing how they conducted themselves with business, uh, how they conducted themselves professionally, and even how a lot of the people that I looked up to were also alpha men uh, from uh, politics to uh, businessmen to individuals who were entertainers. Uh, that's what drew me in originally. Got you. So I feel like a lot of us have that testimony where there's like this allure or this promise of, you know, you join this elite organization and you're going to have this success. You're going to have this network of, you know, brothers who have kind of been trailblazers. They're going to help you bring along and you're going to have this kind of expedited journey. As soon as you graduate college, you know, you're going to have this build, this huge network that's going to get you the high paying job, connect you with the right people, get you the women, da, 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 da. But then once you get into it, it's, you know, it's a whole different story. No, funny you say that, man, because I know, so my school, I went to a PWI, um, predominantly white university, right? Uh, ironically, I was trying to go to HBCU and Hamden was my first choice. Um, small world. Yeah. Ended up not going there, it's a long story, but uh, so I'm at this PWI. And so initially when I went to visit, it was just see a lot of people that look like me. So I'm like, man, hi. <laughs> And then it just so happened the weekend I went to visit, they had this uh, the regional step show that they have every year. And I saw thousands of black people. And I was like, okay, here we go. Right. And so that was my first introduction into stepping and all that stuff. And I've been a performer in other uh, uh, avenues, whatnot. And so I love, I love every bit of that. Right. But then once I got on the yard, I saw how, the, like uh, Julian mentioned, how the like, alphas carried themselves. And I was like, man, and I, saw, I just started asking questions, hearing around, like they were winning like awards. Um, even out of all the Greeks, the white Greeks and black Greeks, the, like the alphas were beating uh, out the white Greeks that had like hundreds of members. I'm like, man, them boys is doing something, right? And so I, was, I just like, like I just saw myself kind of fitting in with all that, man. So it made it easy for me yeah. at the time. But, you know, I was always trying to find myself anyways, in, in a sense. So 
So it just fit perfectly at the time. Yeah. And, you know, it makes me think of the scripture where it talks about how a double minded man is unstable in all his ways, because it's like, you know, the presentation above ground when you when you meet the brothers and when you come into the org, it's like, you know, they present themselves a certain way. Everything's super, you know, professional. Everything's well organized. Everything's put together. But it's like you you see those same brothers in a set and it's a you know, it's a it's literally like a bipolar type of just it's like a you know it's a two different sides it's really double-minded and that's why the whole process is just unstable there's nothing stable about being online like uh, the whole process i, I was unstable because <laughs> i was that i was that haven't been in your face you know all that but hey when it's time to go to set like you're gonna get a different a different animal yeah. literally uh behind the scenes so you're right man that's crazy yes and, you know, I was just talking with some former Kappas last night and even just even just how you change when you're going through the process of pledging and even the type of person that you are after you pledge. So I remember and I'm sure a lot of the alphas, I'm sure all the orcs kind of, you know, we recite the same pieces on the same pieces. But the the poem excuses where it talks about, you know, excuses are just tools of incompetency and excuses are good for nothing. And I remember after I finished pledging, like I just had no compassion for anybody because it was just like, there's no excuse, you know, whatever is going on in your life, whatever you have going on in your job, whatever, like there's no excuse for you still not to be able to perform or to get the job done and do what you said. And so, you know, it's, it's just no fruit of the spirit. It's just, you know, fruit of the enemy, really. It's, I, so for me personally, I had no compassion for anybody. I was just dark, um, you know, very proud after going through the pledge process because that's what it builds you up to be. We talk a lot about being, you know, torn down and being built up, but it's like, what are we building? What are we building these men up to be during the pledge process? So let's talk yeah, about bro. the process for Alpha. Oh, yeah. I was, I was also going to say just like the culture around at the universities where there's Greek life, uh, the culture even for non Greek members, it's so, um, I don't know, it's just so, it's so deceptive, right? And there's so many expectations even that people have that are non Greek that they have for Greeks, right? And so I didn't necessarily pledge to, uh, because I wanted to have the girls. Now I did see that, you know, the alphas, they was, they was smooth with it. And I saw myself fitting in with that, right? That I didn't really do it for that, man, but I'm like, that's just right up my alley, right? Um, so it was a lot of that going on and, it's just it's just crazy how it's we have our own identity things, but then you have other people trying to put identity on you also. So there's a tug of war everywhere, right? So if there's somebody that is a believer and trying to uh, walk a certain path, then it's really difficult to see outside, you know what I'm saying, of all the culture, right, that's been presented around us. Yeah, that's, that's good, man. So... Let's talk about the process for Alpha. So, you know, obviously all of, all of the orgs, there are gods attached to them. There are oaths and covenants that we make during the pledge process. So, you know, I really try to emphasize during these conversations because a, a lot of the, the defense, I guess you could say, for these organizations is that, you know, it's not bad. Um, we do good things. You know, not everybody has to pledge. Not everybody gets beat up. But, you know, whether or not you get beat up, whether or not you get paddled, like every single org has a ceremony, a ritual, um, all of them, most of them include altars, oaths to different gods, Greek, Roman, Egyptian gods. And, you know, a lot of people don't even understand that a lot of these gods are really just Babylonian gods that have been recreated or reimagined, you know, to Greek or Egyptian. So it's like, read the whole Old Testament and we know what the Lord says about idolatry. We know what happened to the, you know, to the children who bowed down to Babylonian gods. So let's talk about some of the things that happen in the alpha pledging process. Um, so Julian, where, when you were going through your process, and I know you were a charter line, so you probably have a unique experience as well. Um, were there any red flags for you while you were doing, going through the process that you were like, uh, you know, maybe this is conflicting with my faith? Oh, absolutely. Just like all, all um, three of us know um, that, especially if you were rocking with the Holy Spirit before you came into the orb or you had a relationship uh, with Christ uh, before you went uh, to pledge, uh, there is many flags. I talk about that a lot when um, either just speaking with people who are in the org still or even people who have come out of the BGLOs recently that uh, truly you're going to not be able to ever tell me, especially or any of us now on the other side, that if you 
truly knew God and knew the Holy Spirit, that there wasn't different tuggings at your heart uh, to say that, oh, this is a red flag, or maybe something is wrong uh, with this situation. And uh, during the pledge process, just like you said, Ashton, we uh, were a charter line, and so we didn't actually have all through an underground process because uh, as many of us uh, know who have been in BGLOs, uh, the charter line is the first line um, that comes out at the university or even uh, for the grad chapter. And so uh, they have a lot of eyeballs on you. Uh, but nevertheless, I was asked um, to go underground uh, after we had already uh, come out with our probate and we were already active members on campus. And so uh, a lot of people uh, know that you can still go ledge process after your probate or after you have uh, received your letters and certif 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 certificates uh, from nationals uh, to make sure that uh, you are branded as an alpha now. And so when we were going through uh, preparing for the probate, a lot of times, as all of us uh, who had a probate and undergrad know, uh, you're staying up late, you're potentially missing class the next morning. Uh, you may even be failing some quizzes or some tests in school because your mind is just all the way like razzled uh, from having to learn and spit all the information uh, for every single night leading up to the probate based off of how long your pledge process is. And so the uh, Holy Spirit uh, was tugging at our heart. Uh, I'll just sum it up. Uh, one particular night, it was maybe two or three days before uh, we actually had the probate. And I actually crossed at a PWI just like Adrian, but uh, I did go to a HBCU before um, transferring to a PWI. And in the car that night, we were coming home from set. Uh, one of my uh, line brothers at the time, he was dropping us off uh, at Kennesaw State's campus by the gym. And we had a moment of clarity, uh, literally a heart check, as I like to say. And we all uh, were claiming to be believers. We all were claiming uh, to, to uh, follow um, uh, Christ and Yahshua. Uh, but we had a moment with really something that God wants us to do. And it was like dead silent in the car. Uh, we were getting ready to go about our ways and to get ready to go home and sleep, uh, to prepare for school the next morning or class. But uh, we literally had someone, I believe it was the driver, say, is this something that God wants us to do? And of course, we played it off like a lot of us uh, do when the Holy Spirit is really checking you in that moment and said, oh, um, uh, there, there's, there's so much upside, like Adrian said, to what we can do on the other side. And um, we didn't have to go through any begrudged uh, pledge process where you had to take wood and things of that nature to even get to the probate. And so uh, we shrugged uh, that conversation underneath uh, the carpet or under the ground uh, that night. But I, I still had it stay with my mind throughout the whole process leading up to the probate. And that was one of the seeds that I know uh, was tugging at my heart, particularly to say uh, that you are in error. Uh, you are in the wrong. Uh, you're willingly deciding to go through and become a member and go to membership weekend, go to the probate, uh, go through the uh, uh, the full last steps of the process to become an alpha. And I was, I was ashamed of that when I came out on the other side because literally I was a, a Holy Ghost filled um, Bible reading uh, believer, although I was still sinning uh, like a lot of us were in college, I still did profess uh, Christ to be my Lord and Savior and also uh, that God was, was my, my father. But at the end of the day, I willingly went into the organization knowing that the Holy Spirit was not just checking me that time in the car, but multiple times throughout the process. And so I, I can't uh, get, get get people a pass when they say that they were truly uh, Bible thumping, Holy Ghost filled uh, believers, and, and they actually blatantly say that they didn't have any spiritual checks or Holy, Holy Spirit checking them because multiple people that I've talked to since being out uh, since 2011. 2000, that's my story. Man, that's, so my story is way different. <laughs> um, so I didn't, when I was going through the process, I can't, I did not recognize any red flags, right? Uh, well, there were a few things, but like, you know, like make you think like, what the heck you know but 
there was a commonality of like, hey, this is what we're doing. Um, and so a thing that me and my uh, former line brothers would always say, like, hey, it gets greater later. Like, you know, we we look at the kind of like the weakest uh, brother. It was like, hey, if he can make it, we can make it, right? And so even though some of the stuff was crazy, some stuff was a little sketchy, we was like, you know, just part of the process. It's just part of the process, right? But um, even outside of that, the pride, remember I talked about how the Alpha seemed like they had it all together. There was so much pride in these organizations. I mean, like, I'm talking about, like, just how, like, people that's, that's in the uh, military, it's like hardcore. You, you've seen that hardcore military dude, like Army, everything, Air Force, everything, the Marines, everything. Like, they kind of, like, zoned in, locked in. That same tenacity, that same uh, intensity is in these organizations sometimes, you know, and I mean, you know, let somebody when these organizations song come on or, you know, or something, you're going to, they going to wild out, you know, get super turned. Right. Um, so I've always been in church my entire life. Uh, father was a, uh, my dad was a, uh, system pastor. He's a pastor, you know, and so I was one of the PK kids. Right. But, uh, so I've been in church my entire life, but I didn't come to know Christ for myself until I got older. Even when the whole time I was in school, Hey, I was a, uh, bonafide, lukewarm christian i love the lord but i'm gonna kick it i'm gonna be at every party i'm gonna smoke i'm gonna drink you know and i'm gonna turn around I'm gonna get up and go go to church on sunday morning right and so i might smell like crown roll or something but i'm gonna be in the church right and so i was all over the place and so now after the fact after i came out it's like after i decided to denounce and go into that process the lord started revealing all these different things that were red flags so i was like Oh man, I did think that, or I did, you know, uh, but it, I, my eyes were so blinded at the time that it didn't seem like red flags. And so my sophomore year is when I pledged, I was 19. Um, and it was like from school started like second, third week in August, uh, maybe like the third week in August. And by the second week of school, uh, around Labor Day weekend, like we was, so we had like a week of, of rules, right? Things we couldn't do places we couldn't go we couldn't walk on the grass we can just different things right couldn't take the uh couldn't mm-hmm. take the elevator bro i live on the 12th floor in my dorm you know i'm like bruh, i hear you but if i don't see you i'm taking the elevator uh there's different rules right and then even before the process started and it was uh i know you said you had three it was three of you guys it was 12 of us um uh, and so for uh a pwi that's a big line uh, in fact, I think it's the second biggest line, you know, in the history of our that chapter. Um, and so it was a lot of us. I only knew two or three before we actually pledged or uh, started the process. But that very first night we had to meet up. Um, we were, I mean, I didn't know who's online. I knew two people, two other people that was gonna be on the line. Um, and yeah, uh, it was just it was just crazy. We went to set, we had set probably four to five times a week. Uh, we was online for 56 days. <laughs> Um, uh, and it was, it was intense. Uh, I mean, it was, that was a crazy semester. I was taking like 17 hours working two jobs. I was on the exec board for like two different organizations. I was in the ROTC air force. I literally slept maybe two to three hours a night. If that, it was just, it was a lot. It was grueling. We had, we had mandatory study hall from six to eight every night. And then we would get one of my LB, two of my LBs were RAs, but we would go to one of their room and start going over information, waiting for the call. Right, see what where we're gonna be, what's the plan for the night, what information we need we needed to know or whatever. Um, and then we would go to set. Set didn't really start till about ten or eleven o'clock. Uh, didn't end till about one. Uh, one between one and two. When it was over, we had the debrief. Right, uh, that was usually either at my uh, the dean's house or you know somewhere. Um, so we had a debrief, and then we had we had to be at the gym by five thirty every morning too. So between Three o'clock and five thirty was the time that I had to get anything done, work wise or whatever. So it was just it was a crazy, crazy, crazy experience. Um, uh, I hated it. <laughs> I hated it. I'm like, what are we doing? Uh, but oftentimes after set, me and two of my LBs, uh, we would go to uh, the other one that's RA. We would go in his his bathroom, put the towel on under the door, turn the shower on, and we smoke and and talk about the night and this and that. Uh, very unhealthy habits, right? We kept turning. We were turning everything. Nothing was was pushed back toward the Lord. Nothing glorified the Lord. Nothing at all. Although there was one brother who would uh, make us memorize a few scriptures 
So, you know, say it's Christian based, that's hey, it's Christian based. I don't know that we learn in scripture, you know, and so uh, I don't know. I think in our human minds, we have to find justification in different things, and we found a way to find justification for everything. Uh, at least I did. And so it made it easier to kind of go through the process. I mean, I even groomed and coached other people. I, I was responsible responsible for bringing so many people into the organization. Like, I feel horrible about it now. You know, I was like, man, I was one of those people. You know what I'm saying? I was like so deceived and working for the enemy, you know? And so it was just, it was, it was, it was crazy. It was a crazy time. And I was, I was completely bought in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, that's good how you say that we find ways to justify everything that we're doing in the process. Because I remember, you know, being online for Kappa and even just reading some of the hymns, I would look at my former line brothers like this. I remember I could some some of them I couldn't even help myself from laughing at because it just was it just felt foolish for us to be singing some of these songs. And, you know, you say things like to thee or thine presence. So it's like, you know, what is this entity that is a thee? What is thine? But like you said, we always find a way to justify it. So I think that's why it's so important for us to make these type of videos, because there are some things, there are a lot of things, none of this stuff could be justified, but there are just some things that it's like, it's very black and white. You know, if you're a believer of Jesus Christ, there's just no way for you to justify that. Oh, this is okay. You know, we always, the common excuse is, oh, it's just nothing. It's just an oath. It's just, or it's just something that we said, but scripture says, we're going to have to give an account for every idle word. The scripture says not to bow down to idols. So Let's uh, let's dig into some of the things that are in the alpha rituals that you, there's no way to justify them. So, so this is this is uh, this is from the alpha ritual part of the process that you all go through, and obviously you can explain it better than I do. But this is literally what it states in the rituals. It says the candidate shall kneel and eat the food prepared by the gods, gods with a lowercase g and an s at the end, prepared by the gods for alpha phi alpha men oysters or cold raw macaroni is the food. And so right there, it's telling us, you know, that candidates or initiates are going to have to bow and eat food that is supposed to be prepared by some other gods. So it's like, what is the justification for this? Bro, it's so, it's so crazy. So with our, you know, so I had the underground uh, and above ground process. So, and they end up, uh, we started the underground process really early on. And, you know, we have our three weekends, uh, I think it used to be two, maybe when I did, but, uh, Anyways, um, so we have our hell week, right? Our, when we had to set up our hell week, our eighth week was the week leading up to the last week of our above ground process. And so we have, they call it the, we call it the meal. They called it the meal, right? And so we had our own underground version of it. And then we had the above ground version of it. And it was, bro, it was disgusting. Like it was all kinds of just, Bro, I just even thinking about it makes me want to vomit. They it was, it was, they just made this whole spectacle of it, right? And we, they made us. We were on our knees. We couldn't use our hands. We we're on our knees eating like dogs. So they prepared this food, um, and they had it dyed with, with like food coloring. So it just looked just gross. And we we're like eating, and then they put they put bubble gum. You know those bubble gum, um, those little bubble gum cans, the pink ones. They're kind of hard. Uh, you start chewing it. They had it all mixed into it, and we had to, bro. It was horrible. So we're 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 down on our hands and knees like dogs, uh, eating this, and we had to finish it. If you vomit, you got to eat it. You know, it was just, bro, it was a horrible thing, man. And so the whole when they actually got to the actual ritual part, going through this on the and the um uh, the above ground process, um, uh, I was like, that was nothing. I'm thinking, I just went through all this other stuff a few days ago. This this ain't nothing, you know. And I wasn't even thinking about what they were saying. I was just thinking, we're almost done. We're almost done, right? That was only my process. I mean, my mindset, but but once I've come out and the veil was removed from my eyes and seen this, I'm like, this is crazy. Like, this, it's nuts. Like, and the God, and there's so many of us who are illiterate to the things of God, right? And, 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 the, and I think it's Hosea where it says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. It's not so much just not knowing scripture it's a lack of having understanding of god's word and the spirit realm right and there's so much that we buy into that we make covenant with through these altars that people don't even like i never really thought about it until i got to the point where i was coming out right i mean i personally had started seeking more information and then there was revealed to me but 
going through the process, man, that's, I mean, we're not taught to think anything, anything, right? I felt like I did my due diligence, my homework, my research. My research was uh, Googling. I don't even think Google was like a big thing at the time when I played, right? So I was asking around. I would look up what I could on the internet, right, which was very surface. They have the pretty surface stuff for you to read, all right? You know, um, but going to the details, bro, it's, it's crazy. And I, once I started going through the process of coming out, I was actually went to the ritual. I pulled it up. Just hey, I ain't tripping. I don't care about. I don't care about revealing. It's online. Anybody can. Uh, I was going line by line. I was trying to, like, I was trying to make it not be right. Right. I was like, make this can't be right. This can't be. You know, I was trying to make it okay. You know, I was like, got to be some some other way. I'm reading through it and I'm just like. Bro, it's right there. We've made covenants and did all this stuff to celebrate these other deities and people. We people I've never heard anybody talk about Alpha being represented by another god or anything. And my common response to anybody was, "I ain't I'm not worshiping no other gods. I'm a Christian. I'm a believer. You know, like and it's a Christian based organization. I ain't never. So I just assume uh, associated bowing down like somebody would. Uh, I assume associate that as worshiping somebody or another entity." You know, even kneeling at the at the altar in the ritual that it talks about, I never even considered that, right? But it's just so crazy, man. And just, I mean, just so many scriptures, right, that, that talk about not having other gods before us. You know, you start at the very beginning, Exodus 20 and 3, right? And it's just so crazy how we are so blinded because we have we have an expectation, right? A false expectation uh, or this, a deceitful expectation. Yeah, uh, right. And that's all we're focusing on. So the things of God, actual God, big G, are not even of concern. What's your say, Julian? Yeah, no, nah, I'm just catching up. Um, y'all, y'all already know it's warfare. I'm in, I was in the matrix for a second. I'm I'm back. I'm back. I got the I got the cosign from uh Neo and Morpheus to come back, but um <laughs> what's it called? Uh I'm gonna talk about since you talked about Adrian, the the the, the food, which is um, a major part of the process. I know with us, the main things that stood out going into membership weekend, uh, Southeast uh, region at the time when we had crossed, it was one of the biggest uh, in the US uh, besides in the Pacific region. And they were like, it was crazy uh, amounts of chapters, including grad chapters that were crossing at the time. And so one of the main things that stood out to me with the process that did not sit well with me uh, even when we were going at membership weekend, uh, we did have to, as you, I'm sure Adrian had to do too, uh, have to hold the brick up. And the brick is literally uh, in the alpha process. It's one of the most important parts because um, you cannot lose that brick. Like it's almost like when you're in football where you're going through a summer uh, training or summer uh, workouts and they tell you to not drop that ball. Like the brick is literally part of you and it's ingrained into your identity uh, as an alpha uh, before you cross over and be become a member and uh, we had to hold the brick high and we had to basically not let it go uh, while someone who was a grad chapter member or someone uh, who was in the room uh, we were at a, a elementary school because I got to see the process on the other side after we had already gone over uh, for our neos and literally, uh, they they are paddling you uh, while you are holding the brick high, and they're basically saying, "Do not drop that brick." Uh, that was one of the the main flags that stood out. The second one was we were going through the hallways of an elementary school, mm -hmm. and we were having to deaf march throughout the hallways of an elementary school. This is again an elementary school that was in I think DeKalb County. Um, over by Greenbrier Mall that one of the brothers was a, a teacher or a faculty at, and he had the keys to the building. And we're death marching along with all of the other chapters that were crossing and especially the grad chapters that were crossing. And little did I know at the time, because I wasn't that tapped into spiritual warfare, but as we are death marching past one another in the hallways, we are blindfolded, of course, so we cannot see anything. Uh, besides uh, blackness and darkness until uh, literally uh, we are having ourselves unmasked while sitting in a gymnasium uh, while, the, while the Sphinx uh, is, of course, surrounded by candles. Uh, but fast uh, backtracking a little bit, even the day 
death marching uh, before I get to the Sphinx was literally you can feel the spirits that are crossing and passing by your ears as you're death marching, even with the blindfolds on. And even if you're not someone who's spiritually uh, tapped in to, to know that there's a spirit realm, like I was able to sense that at that time and literally hearing all the other uh, chapters that are death marching while you are, of course, um, uh, spitting information or, or you're singing a song, you're singing a hymn, uh, that also was a flag to me that stood out with the process because they're wanting you to be in unison and also to basically have everything else drowned out while you are death marching uh, before you go and see the Sphinx. And then the last part that I'll just comment on real quick uh, was and I learned this from a lot of OG alphas uh, here in Georgia after we had gone through and crossed for membership weekend is that you don't take the blindfold off someone that is behind you, one of the brothers, when you're sitting in a circle around the Sphinx or sitting in a big gymnasium, a basketball circle, probably hundreds of brothers uh, that are sitting in the circle and we're all having the, uh, the blindfold on while we're sitting down waiting for another brother to unmask us. The first thing that you see when you get unmasked is the, mis the mystic thinks. And there's three heads that they had sitting on a table at half court, at center court. Literally, that's even, um, um, uh, that's even uh, important too, that the Sphinx was at center court. And literally they're having candles lit around the Sphinx head. So the first thing that you see when you're unmasked is the Sphinx. When I talked to some older alpha men, they had mentioned to me that that's a form of mysticism, that they want the, the beam of the light of alpha and this mystic sphinx to be ingrained in your psyche. Right when you are coming out of darkness, the first thing that you see is the light. That sounds something like scripture. Uh, wouldn't y'all wouldn't y'all two kings say is that you're coming out of darkness into the light. But literally on a psyche standpoint, that's the first thing that you see. And so... I know a lot of brothers said that they had headaches uh, after they were able to turn the lights on and they were after um, uh, able to celebrate with their line uh, when uh, everyone had basically uh, said the final alpha prayer. But uh, that's a that's a form of mysticism that you're literally having the sphinx head with candles around it while we're all staring at the middle center court where the sphinx head is. Literally, the first thing that you see when you're uh, unmasked from darkness is the Sphinx light that is coming out. And we know that that is a mystic being uh, for us who have studied anything with Egypt or ancient Kemet. And so uh, that that was already flags throughout the process before you even have to go to an underground. That's just the member, the member weekend process. And so uh, those were things that didn't sit well with me personally. Yeah. Bro, you hit on so, so many things I want to piggyback on. The bricks. Yes. The bricks was heavy. Like we had to hold them bricks. So my our very first night before we even started really anything, we did have a bunch of calisthenics. We we're holding stuff up hold, like probably a good hour at least, right? Couldn't couldn't let it down. And we had to hold that stuff up often. So bricks they call it our burdens, right? The burdens of uh, of alpha. Ironically, bro, I, I led a prayer this morning uh for the church. We have a prayer line Monday through Friday. And so I, I was leading prayer and I was praying. Uh, this is the top subject sub, was like prayers of the heart. So I was just praying. I was just praying that the, the Holy Spirit would reveal anything that's hidden um, that we're that's been undealt that we haven't dealt with or, um, you know, something that just needs to be um, reconciled to Christ. Or I was praying that thing and I was looking for some after the prayer this morning, I was looking for something uh, in the office. and. I was looking at this file cabinet, bro. I found a brick. So like I thought I had gotten through everything. And my wife was there. I was like, look at this. It was one of the bricks that I had when I was online. And I'm like, man, thank you, Jesus, for you know revealing that. You know, um, like got you know, got rid of that thing. But that's crazy when I mean, you mentioned the bricks. But the whole the uh eating the food of the gods, that whole process, the whole process, the ritual, if you read through that thing, it's like a whole setup, right? It's it's a it's a setup for um, rebranding um, our mind, rebranding our identity, and that aspect of the eating the food of the God. It's almost like a form of communion, right? So biblically, we take com communion, do this in remembrance of me, right? We eat the we eat the the bread, we drink um, 
the the wine or uh, the juice, whatever it is. Uh, but it was some things to kind of mimic that. You know, it just reminded me that everything that the God that God does, the devil tries to emulate. He tries, he mimics, right? The whole uh, parable of the wheat and the tares, right? Um, I mean, that's so that's so powerful, man. Just because it just shows how deceptive the enemy is. Everything that God does, the devil's gonna be right there, right? So if you're not spiritually awakening, awaken, then you can easily miss uh, mis mistake the the wheat for the tares and go after the tares, right? And you ain't got nothing but some weeds there. You know what I'm saying? And so many people are living their lives amongst the weeds and don't even realize it. You know, and so that was just so powerful, man. And then the whole Sphinx, same thing, bro. We, my God, we were blindfolded when they were, uh, you know, we took the impressions. Uh, and when they removed the blindfold, there was this table, it was an altar. I had, uh, there was some candles. It was a, a, a Sphinx, a big Sphinx head. And there was a FIA uh, around it. You know, everything was kind of lit up, right? And let's say Alpha, Light of the World, Pride of My Heart, whatever. And, it's just crazy how, like you said, like they remove the blindfold. That's the first thing that we see because it's, they're trying to indoctrinate us into uh, the spirit of Alpha. You know, there's different things that talks about the spirit of Alpha, right? And we do more research, you realize that the spirit of Alpha is tied directly to uh, uh, everything Egyptian. If you read the very beginning of the ritual, it talks about how they got the name and why they got it. And it's all tied to the Egyptian uh, stuff, right? They wanted to uh, mimic the Egyptian uh, culture and all that stuff. And they, uh, it's just crazy, man. And the Egyptians, they they serve multiple gods, right? Uh, but one of the primary thing ones they they serve was the the sun god, right? And so it's just crazy, man. So every time we talk about Alpha, we talk we're, we're edifying these deities, and it's just crazy how blinded we were, man. It just every time I think about it, it just blows my mind. And then the the I know we all have hymns, right? So you sing the Alpha hymn, which I've sang thousands and thousands of times. At the conclusion of the Alpha hymn. For those who may be watching, who who is unfamiliar or maybe considering, uh, man, at the conclusion of the Alpha Hymn, we all say the prayer. The prayer, which I, it never resonated with me then, but coming out, it does. It says, oh, Lord, may the true spirit of the fraternity, right? Talking about these deities. We didn't know that. May the true spirit of the fraternity rule our hearts, guide our thoughts, and control our lives so that we may become through these servants of all. Yeah. Bro, I'm just, this is mind blowing how stupid we <laughs> were. But it's like we we do things like that because you're learning. You know, we learn the hymns, we learn the poems in set. While you're getting beat up, while you're getting punched, while you're doing push ups. So it's like you're not even you're not even really discerning what you're saying. Your mind is just let me just learn this so I can hurry up and get out of here and go home. It's like we're literally like you said we're being brainwashed, we're being indoctrinated, and it's yeah. just you know, so when it's right. time, that you just that is chaotic too. That is set. And I just want to tell people, too, because when you when you hear us talking about we have to learn, we have to recite this. I'm sure alphas do something similar. But like in set, you, you're, you're not even allowed to talk in a normal voice. You have to talk in what they call either like a grit or you have to talk in some type of thing that distorts your voice. And if you've ever seen like a deliverance session, if you've ever seen a demon manifest, that's literally what we sounded like as we were speaking. It's like you have to distort your voice so that you sound it's just demonic really is the only way that I could describe how you sound, but you're not talking normal. Your face has to be scrunched up the entire time. You can't look at people with a straight face. It's a very, very demonic um, set is a very demonic scene. And I, I was even telling people the other day when I envision of what the torture of hell will be like, it's literally what set looks like. I remember when I went to my first, um, what do they call them? A lockup where you, you know, where you go and have set with like three or four other chapters it's literally just like different bros in a corner beating up this one guy. Somebody's in the cut over here. Somebody's getting electricity over here. Somebody's in crucifix over here. It's just chaos. It's just extreme chaos, disruption, um, just violence, rage, no fruit of the spirit. None whatsoever, bro. It was, it was just a chaotic environment, right? So it's funny how, how everything is so smooth, right? And they will play some music. They'll play, catch this. They will play a lot of uh, when I was pledging, Jay Z's uh, "The Blueprint" had just come out, right? Uh, also, a pop popular song was "Roll Out" by Ludacris. So when it's time for us to roll out, get in the cut to get beat, they playing "Roll Out," dun, 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 right? So all this stuff, huh? 
they try to make you hype or like to feel oh, good. Oh yeah, bro. And so I'm like, okay, let's let's do this, right? So we trying to get ourselves. We get because we had to get get to where we're gonna have set change into our set attire, uh, which was the same attire for the entire 56 weeks or 56 days. Uh, we didn't like, yeah, it's it's stupid. So we couldn't really wash it because sometimes they would draw. It was uh, we had white t shirt and black pants. We all had the same thing: white t shirt, black pants, and these uh, black shoes. Um, they would draw or write on some of our stuff, and whatever they we had to be unified, right? Whatever they did for one, they had right. everybody else had to have it too. So one of the line brothers had a tattoo right here. We all need a tattoo right here, right? It was just, I mean, but the environment you walk in, they got this music playing, they start yelling. One time we we had a uh, one night, uh, said we were some there was some brothers from Wayne University or just somewhere up north. Um, they were there and. Bro, it was chaotic. Our chapter was already kind of big. It was 12 on our line. Um, and then we probably had another 18, 18 or so brothers in the chapter, 18, 20 brothers in the chapter. Then these other people were here. So it was like, it was just, it was chaos. At one point, we posted up to the east. Uh, we had, we, we wore a, a sphinx head every night, right? Uh, and we holding on to our sphinx head, right? Because if somebody snatches, uh, gets your sphinx head, that's a whole other thing, right? You got to take so many licks and everything to get it back. So um, I'm posted up. I remember just, I just, I hear all this commotion. Some of these brothers uh, from this other uh, chapter were there. All of a sudden, I just feel, I mean, I hear all this stuff. The whole line is shifting. So they were trying to get one of my former line brothers, uh, Swing's head. Uh, look, we was about to go now. I picked up my brick. I was like, <laughs> it was just, oh, it was chaotic, man. And people don't realize, but set is a place, you know, where we go to get haze or whatnot. But set is a dimension in the Satanism, uh, the Satanism religion or sect, whatever. I think set is the fifth uh, dimension or something like that. But it's just crazy, man. There's so much, so everything is, there's demonic ties to every single thing we did, right? And there's manipulation. When there is uh, scripture, it's either uh, misinterpreted or misquoted or uh, misused or misconstrued, all that stuff, man. It's just, it's just, it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say real, real quick, Ashton, before we move on, just like Adrian, um, he was hitting it on the head. Y'all kings are dropping a ton of jewels. Uh, we talk about uh, the spirit of Alpha, just like Adrian said uh, earlier. And uh, a lot of folks who are in the church, uh, they feel that they're getting filled up by the Holy Spirit when they go to church. And just like he mentioned earlier, um, the spirit of Alpha, just like the spirit of your sorority or fraternity is real. And just like I mentioned with my testimony and going through membership weekend, uh, you can feel spirits that are in the room, even if you're someone that is not spiritual, even if you're someone that doesn't believe in the spirit realm, like every single experience that you go through from membership weekend to going to set to preparing for the probate uh, to even being at certain events, uh, you are around a spirit and it's not the Holy Spirit, it might I add. And uh, when it came to, I, I was just going to even add on what Adrian said, he reminded me, when it comes to ingraining the hymns and ingraining different songs uh, in your head and in your psyche, like Alpha, uh, they are bar none outside of, I think, maybe uh, Kappa, Alpha Psi, and then also uh, Sigmas, uh, very ingrained in songs and using songs and hymns that you're having to repeat constantly to have it basically ingrained in your head so that you're singing these hymns even when you go to sleep that you're singing these hymns first thing that you wake up in the morning not just spitting information like all the frats have to do but actually singing and we know that singing is a form of worship to yah it should be a form of yah not to station and so uh, when we went through membership intake weekend I remember when we were going into a holding room before we went into the gym to be exposed to the light of Alpha, uh, you had to go into the room one by one. And they were having us sing uh, the cold uh, December song, which all Alphas, especially if you went undergrad, uh, you had to learn uh, the cold December song. Uh, it's going to be a cold December when you look back and then remember. And literally, literally you're hearing people come into the room singing the same hymn and catching on to the hymn even if you don't know it 
And that's a form of indoctrination mind control, like MK Ultra, where you don't even know the song, but by the time you leave out of that holding room after hundreds of alphas are coming in uh, when they are holding us in that room before they release us to the gymnasium uh, to be unmasked, you are literally in worship even without knowing it before you even cross. And so that's the main thing I wanted to point out is that there is a direct spirit but it is not the Holy Spirit uh, that you are honoring or that you are engulfed with. These are literally demonic spirits. Like uh, Adrian said, these are ancient spirits, Egyptian spirits from literally thousands of centuries ago in ancient Kemet and also in Egypt uh, that you are literally honoring and worshiping without even knowing. Yeah. Yep. That's good. And Adrian, you know, you talked about set. Set is literally a deity, like in ancient Egypt, Set is the name of a deity and the deity of disorder, violence, rage, and storms. And when you think about what Set actually was, it was literally violence, disorder, rage. It was like, they used to even call it, oh, it's going to be the perfect storm tonight. You know, if you had other chapters coming through, it was like when other chapters came to see, what they call it, when they see you. It was like the brothers would act up then because they want to show off like, you know, oh, our boys are hard. Our boys get down. So we're going to, you know, pledge them even harder tonight just to show the other chapters that, you know, we don't have punks or our, our boys aren't soft. So set is literally mm -hmm. a place, you know, we say, oh, we're going to gather at set. That spirit of set is meeting you there. Trust me for violence, rage, destruction. And it's just when I think about seeing how some of the brothers would. It's literally like that spirit would just turn on when set started. And then after set, you know, when you're cooling down or, and it's, it's not a thing about it. It's literally demonic that after set, you know, after we get beat up, after we get in the cut, you sit down, at least for us in Kappa, we would sit down and do what we call rock out. So you literally sit on the floor and it's like, you're rocking your body back and forth to kind of keep the blood in your body circulating properly so that you wouldn't get, you know, these huge blisters. There would be sometimes that we would lay on our stomachs and brothers would come and like walk on, walk on the back of our legs or even, you know, up to where you were paddled to kind of smooth out, get the blood flowing so that you don't get wells forming up, you know, on the back of your body. So it's, but you know, so it's like, oh, this, this, how we're supposed to form brotherhood is by you soothing out all the pain that you just put me through. Oh yeah. That's crazy. I mean, dude, I, I remember, I remember pissing blood, you know, uh, it was, crazy that the semester i pledged man i got uh toward the end of it, i got sick i mean there was things we did i mean you hear people talk about passing the egg and there's so many just even um spiritual evil spiritual connotations with that right um so that we can be yoked together right but the bible also says be not yoked with unbelievers right completely contrary to the word um but like again it was 12 of us they passed we passed the egg it started at the end I was the ace. And so, and I had to swallow all that. Bro, it was just, it was I so much even, stuff. I couldn't even bro. eat after that for a little bit. It, bro, it, I was it, so sick. It. I went to the doctor, right? And I started having like these pains in my abdomen. Bro, I had ulcers. Uh, and the doctor was, I was, he was like, man, I've never seen anyone your age with all these ulcers. And he was like, are, are you under a lot of stress? I'm like, eh, you can say that, <laughs> you know, a little bit. <laughs> You know, but it was just crazy, man. Like, like we made we we made people anyone that was planning on uh, pledging, uh, they had to get a physical, right? Because there was this one, there was this one guy. Uh, he came in the year after me uh, to OU, and like he and all his all his his boys, they came in with they all pledged. He couldn't pledge just because he had like a heart thing, right? And we didn't feel like he was healthy enough just because it's grueling. It's I guess super intense. Like the whole time, this the stuff we have to do. Like everybody loses a lot of weight, you know, because this is we can barely eating, barely sleeping, and just the intensity of it all is crazy. But when we think about, you know, you mentioned like some of the songs and different things, right? Common song between all the the D9 organizations, right? Something like um, was uh, all my love, um, peace and happiness, I give to Alpha or or Kappa, or Omega, or Delta, or Zeta, or Sigma, or whatever, right? And those are all common things that's contrary to the spirit, or to the uh, to the word of God. Deuteronomy 6, you know, it says, um, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and all thy soul, and all thy might. 
right? If we're having a love, of, we can't serve two gods. We can't love all gods. I mean, both gods, you know what I'm saying? It's just crazy how we just, and when people are sing, singing these chants, it's, you know, it's, 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 there's this intensity, you know, like, you you know, we kind of glorify people being intense or crunk or with it, you know, when they're saying it. And, bro, it's so crazy. I remember, remember one time being at a step show and doing at the step show, uh, I was in the audience. Uh, I wasn't stepping in that show, but at, I was in the audience. But when whoever was on the stage, they started spitting Invictus doing their show, the whole auditorium erupted, right? Because that's something like everybody uh, learns. Uh, and when that was written by a dude that didn't believe in God, right? And that even that that poem is contrary to the word of God as well. Yeah, that that poem is demonic, but like you said, it's like the most intense or the most exciting part of so many probates or even if you're at set you know if you run invictus you know the brothers will be proud of you it's it's yeah it's all crazy but i wanted to talk about this portion of the ritual because again so many times we hear the defense of these organizations like oh i wasn't worshiping another god or i never bowed at any altars but first of all an altar is literally just a table where you give reference to a god or you know a deity it should be the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but any other little God. And so let me read from the Alpha ritual. It says, all members shall say, behold, behold, as the candidate's blindfold is withdrawn and he sees Alpha Phi Alpha, the light of the world in large letters just over the altar. And so Alpha even has in its ritual that there is an altar. And obviously the altar is not unto God, it's unto Alpha and whatever, you know, deity the Sphinx and, you know, all the other things that are in allegiance with Alpha. But it's just crazy for anyone to open up their mouths and defend when Alpha is saying in its rituals, Alpha Phi Alpha, the light of the world. We, like, come on now, how how do we justify this as believers? Alpha Phi Alpha is the light of the world when we know who the light of the world is, who came to expel darkness, the only light that could expel the darkness. Yet we find a way to justify this because it's Black culture, or we say it's not that big of a deal, you know, we didn't mean it like that. But our that's the thing in the spirit realm, even though we may not mean it, it doesn't matter. When we say things in the spirit realm, that those words are activated and they begin to take form of what we said. Absolutely, bro. We said portal. We open up portals, right? First of all, we open up portals with our intent and obedience, right? That that opened up the door for the enemy right there, right? But then when it comes to these altars, bro, every covenant. We talk about altars, but the altar, every covenant is preceded by an altar, right? That's good and evil. All throughout scripture, when it talks about, you, you, uh, if you read the Bible, it, they'll stop and build an altar, right? Because uh, to the Lord or whatever. And um, they're doing this to make this covenant with the Lord. And those things, man, and the Bible talks about how, um, I think in Exodus where it uh, says things will go into effect into the third and fourth generation also, right? So you open up the spirit realm. And people don't realize, don't comprehend that we're spirit beings, right? There's a spirit realm all around us. That's why Ephesians 6, 12 says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities and rulers of darkness, right? There's stuff all around us that people, um, they hear, but they don't really understand it, right? And so throughout this this whole ritual, I read through this whole ritual just the other day, again, it's just kind of getting in preparation uh, for this, man. It's just crazy how the, from the very onset, it's like, it's um uh, it's like grooming you it's grooming you to be stripped to like to strip away your identity and to um feed you into uh alpha king you know the alpha kingdom or whatnot and it's just it's just nuts man like you talk about the, what you say and you know, it's just building you up to take on this new identity right and there's so many people that ha are living out these false identities i understand the whole concept of identity extremely well because when i being or miss misled identity just being molested as a kid and all this stuff man i just started doing things early i was just trying to find acceptance right i started smoking drinking uh uh being promiscuous i voluntarily having sex at 13 right and started drinking and smoking during that same time right and so i started all this stuff really early and and i was still just searching for identity and trying to fit in right so fitting in was important to me and there's so many people who they may not admit it right away but are wrestling with identity and trying to you know, just go with the flow, go with the masses. So that's why it's so difficult for some people to just come out because everything that we do, every time we, we're speaking in agreement with this stuff, is taking us deeper and deeper and deeper into the demonic 
uh, world. And we don't even realize, and the, the devil is so conniving um, and deceitful. He gets us so wrapped up to where it, it feels like, oh, it's okay. You know, and people always say, uh, believers, well, my pastor's a cap or my pastor's an alpha or, you know, all these um, these clergymen are, are Greek and that don't mean they can't be wrong. They still human. <laughs> they still, they're still human, man. And there's, bro, there's so many um, the scriptures and things that kind of just tie into that as well. But um, I mean, I, I, I go on and on. <laughs> okay. Oh, no, nah, you're on point. Um, I was just going to add to that in reference to because I was uh, from just uh, a man's perspective that is uh, heterosexual, like black man, a king. Um, a lot of times that when you are coming into these organizations, regardless if it's a sorority or fraternity, um, whether you are hypersexual, whether you are, are not having any sex, or whether you are just searching and exploring yourself, uh, when you go through a process uh, for getting into these organizations, majority of the time, I hear on the back end, after you've crossed, after you've been active for some time, is that that hypersexual, perverse, um, sexual or moral spirit is enhanced uh, to the hundredth degree, not the tenth degree, the hundredth degree. And um, there are people that I know personally that were on my line that I crossed with that came in as heterosexual men from what I what I was told and what I had observed from themselves and literally like a couple years after they had crossed and after they were active um they uh were being basically told uh we were being told that they were exploring either homosexual lifestyles or bisexual lifestyles and so I do want to comment on that especially for us as men especially Black Kings talking about this subject, is that you don't always come out on the back end, literally on the up and up. And by I mean up and up, being able to stand up. And I didn't go through a underground pledge process, as I said at the beginning, I was told directly by a Freemason uh, who my mom was dating at the time that he said, if you've already gone through your probate, you've already gone through receiving your membership cert certificate, uh, why would you subject yourself uh, to go through a pledge process underground afterward? Uh, because literally, it's it makes no sense. You already got your letters. Uh, who cares uh, if people are giving you respect based off of if you're made or paper? Um, that that that's not going to matter at the end of the day when you get to be an actual adult outside of school. And so, uh, literally, I decided not to. But a lot of the brothers. Uh, that I had seen on our line because we were given a choice after the probate, after we received the membership certificate certificates, uh, whether you wanted to go underground or for a pledge project. The tail of our line, it was 12 on our line, and I was the tail again. I decided to say no because I heard from an OG like Freemason, Prince Hall Mason, that you shouldn't. Uh, and so those men, to be honest, that had gone through the process were some of the ones I was speaking of that I found out they, they were into homosexual activity afterwards. And when you are bending over or even straddling yourself on the ground uh, to literally be paddled or to receive wood, uh, that is only the first step. The second step is you are going to have someone insert themselves into you. And Adrian had mentioned this earlier that there are certain wounds or certain openings uh, that we all have gone through, whether it's you were uh, having a situation before uh, high school, whether you were having a situation while you were in college, just using these open doors to continue compounding on that perversity, continue to put compounding on that sexual promiscuity, continue to compound on that that exploration or that free that free uh, choice and free um, uh, uh, free spirit that you may have that you're just wanting to explore and discover uh, new things sexually, especially. And so I'm speaking uh, specifically to those men, those kings uh, that have gone through a situation where you have been violated through the process, that you have gone through a situation where your ADP or DP uh, may have taken advantage of you on the front end or the back end of you becoming an alpha. Um, you need to be able to speak up and stand up, as I say again, because you were abused, uh, you were violated, you were sexually um, abused, you were sexually um, oppressed, 
And so you need to be able to take a stand. And this is one of the reasons that I comment on this is because a lot of men that I talk to, older men and younger men that are either in a fraternity or either a Freemason, they stay in these organizations because of these sexual violations that they received either throughout the process or on the back end because of shame, because of slander, because of blackmail even. I've talked to brothers at HBCUs that people were taking pictures of them doing some of these heinous or sexual acts. And so I'm talking to you specifically from the Holy Spirit to, uh, to, to screen on Ashton's podcast is that you need to come out of that oppressive state. You need to come out of that abusive state. You need to take a stand and stand up and not just get your manhood back, but to literally get your Christ-like manhood back, to get your to get your um your your Proverbs 31 manhood back, to be able to stand for truth. Because if you're being able to say that you could stay in an organization that violated you, that abused you through an altar, through a process, through literally um, hunching you over, through uh, giving you wood, and you were violated, then you have to get healing with that, through deliverance first, but also receive healing to be able to say that you were violated, that that was not right, that that process did not um, did not uh, uh, advance you in any type of way, shape, or form because you are a king. You are a man. You are not. You are not a little boy. You are not that, that is again questioning their sexuality, questioning uh, their their manhood. Uh, you are a king, and you are a royal king. You come from a royal priesthood, and so I'm telling you from on behalf of Ashton, myself, and Adrian that you need to take a stand and not let that chain or that that embarrassment. Uh, that shame holds you back from, again, living for Christ, living for Yah. Uh, because, again, uh, there's so many people I talk to, Ashton and Adrian, that literally are, are, are in these organizations because of that. And that's what I wanted to mention when it comes to the process, that that's an alternate process. That's not the process that you see on paper, but that may be an alternate process that some people went through. But because of the shame, the scorn, and the ridicule, uh, that they are not speaking about that. And so that's all I wanted to mention. Yeah, well, that's so good. That's so good and, and so neat. It comes, it comes down to the fact that they are secret societies. It's like so many believers, they get offended when we call them that, but that's what they are. They are secret societies. And, you know, when you get in these organizations, it's so much don't tell. You know, don't tell, you know, what 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 goes on between brothers, stays between brothers. You know, that's the one thing that they will do about brotherhood is they'll keep a secret because they don't want their business getting out. So it's like, you know, if we abuse this brother, you know, don't tell nobody. Yeah, you may need to go to the hospital, but keep it into between brothers. You know, do say whatever lie that you need to, but do not expose your brother. Don't get your brother in trouble. That's what it is. And so these secret societies, like you said, there's so many men and women who have been abused but because they can't tell on their pro fights they can't tell on their dean their adp they can't tell on the pole mark whatever so much is just hidden but we know the scripture says that whatever is done in the dark will come to light the light of christ comes to expose the darkness and like julian said deliverance and inner healing you know a lot of times when we think about deliverance we, you know, sometimes, especially with this whole deliverance movement, people are recording all the deliverance sessions and we think it's just like, you know, a quick up and out that demon. Yeah. Once that demon leaves, but you need to go through inner healing. Your heart needs to be healed. Your mind needs to be healed. Your soul, your spirit needs inner healing. So do not be afraid to come out, expose, expose these organizations for what they are. And like um, I believe Adrian mentioned earlier about, you know, those covenants go down to the third and generations, your children are going to have to pay the price for what you came into agreement with. There are there are children right now that are some children have ADHD and you don't know why it's because of what you've come into agreement with. Some of your children are suicidal and have anxiety and depression and you're wondering where it came from. It came from when you bowed at the altar and you made that agreement with that demonic spirit and you gave them legal access to come and torment your family, to come and torment your children. And so this is why this is not, you know, this is not a grudge. I could care less about any of the D9 orgs about you know, it's not about any type of bitterness. It's about getting free, getting the children of God free. And especially the black community, we talk so much about being oppressed, so much about being held back in this country. And yes, racism was real. Yes, we've been oppressed, but now we are oppressing ourselves. The black community, we are oppressing ourselves because we are in covenant with demonic spirits. We have made oaths with demonic spirits. 
we talk about poverty. How much money are we giving to these organizations so that they could pay for lawyers to go defend them in court for beating up our children? Like, come on, now, we have to think about this with a sober mind. The scripture tells us to be sober because in sober is not just, you know, um, drinking and drugs. Think about this with a sober mind. These organizations are not righteous. They are not holy. Jesus did not pledge the 12 disciples. God didn't like this is demonic. It's demonic. And our, we need to come out now. All the way, bro. That's I mean, bro, <clears throat> I have a whole separate um just testimony associated with everything you, you just said and you too uh julian man it's just and a lot of people a lot of people first of all people that have dealt with these different things um they feel there's all this shame and guilt associated with it right and so that becomes a stronghold over them right and so and they find themselves kind of wrestling with with things uh it may lead to pornography or it may lead to um a certain lifestyle or whatever, right? But people feel stuck. They feel like, hey, this is just who I am and this is just what this is. But uh, that's just, again, it's a lie of the enemy, right? Because I found myself in some situations, right? Uh, for a period of time. And uh, bro, with me coming out uh, from the organization, the Lord just start healing all these areas, man. And I can truly say that I, I, I live and walk in this full deliverance uh of all of that I, bro for years and years i had i mean sure since i was younger had uh uh pornography addiction right that didn't i didn't get fully delivered from that until after i came out of this organization right because i severed all those ties all those spiritual bonds and connections and covenants that i created throughout the years i finally was able to get free from all of that right and so many people and i, I bro I, when i was an undergrad i know a guy he was an alpha I know when he was a dean, he made one of his uh, one of the guys online. He he brought him to his room. He had put on some porn, and he he he. I forgot what exactly what he said, but he he made this dude uh, like have do oral sex on him, and it was just all this stuff. Bro, I'm just like that's crazy. Like you know what I'm saying? It's just you just using this position and this authority that you have. And you just creating these, um, these extra portals, extra identities, extra just demonic things that now this young man is having to live with and deal with, and it's just crazy, man. And that's so much of that, you know. Uh, being Greek, you would hear people talk about other different Greeks. You hear people talk about alphas, right? Especially they call them gay phi gay, bro. When you go to these uh, conventions. These alpha conventions, uh, whether it's a local convention, regional convention, national convention, bro, I don't know what it is at these conventions. I guess it is a bunch of bunch of men, but you see like all these flamboyant and, and feminine dudes, and it's crazy, bro. It's like now, now that I'm on the other side of things, I mean, even before then, you can see it, right? And you just kind of tolerate it, like, oh yeah, there's some bros, whatever. But no, nah, bro, it's just so crazy seeing this. It's like you can see the spirits on people. And people are so content with it, man. It's so crazy, man. It's that's why what we're doing here is so important. So if anybody is watching and is dealing with some of those things, just know you don't have to stay where you are. You don't have to be stuck uh, in that place, right? You can come out. You can be free uh, and be fully delivered, right? And if anybody is looking at this and and have interest in getting to, to these organizations, man, you better talk to the Lord. You better get your heart right with the Lord first, right? And because if you are still considering it. That means you still got some uh, undealt with things that you need to deal with, right? So speak to that, deal with that, man. And if you are truly committed to the Lord, there's no way you can be committed to one of these organizations. And uh, that touches, we could we could talk for three more hours and still not cover everything because it's, yeah, it's, you know, that's a good point too. When we talk about renouncing and denouncing, it's not enough just to stay inactive, I had so many people tell, well, why don't you, cause I was inactive for a couple of years and I was, the Lord was like, that's not enough. That's not enough. And the other excuse is, well, you know, I'm going to be in alpha and I'm going to, uh, or I'm going to be in cap. I'm going to be in Delta and I'm going to, you know, work from the inside out. I'm going to use this as a way to, uh, I'm going to use this as a way to minister. But Jesus said, you know, the scripture says that Beelzebub cannot cast out Beelzebub. So you cannot do deliverance from something that you are still in 
covenant in agreement with. So you have to come out. It's not enough just to be inactive. You need to come out. You have to break agreement. You had to divorce this organization. Um, you know, one of the things that was told to me when I came out was somebody said, you know, you're this just shows how ignorant and dumb you are because, you know, God could have given you a bigger ministry if you stayed in Kappa because Kappa's influence. And I'm like, just listen to what you said. Because of Kappa's influence, I could have done. I'm like, do you, first of all, I'm not in ministry. Who, none of us are in ministry because we're looking for a platform or a clout. Like, that's not the point of ministry to begin with. Second of all, if you think the God of creation needs a demonic organization to give his children influence to do his work, that just shows how brainwashed you've been in this organization. So I just want to make a very bold statement. There's no room in these organizations for you to, you know, work from the inside out. You need to come out, come out from among them, be separate, come out from among them, come out. Because these organizations, some of them don't claim to be Christian. It's the Christians who are in these organizations that have put that label because they're not ready to come out. These are not Christian organizations and it's not a place for us to be. We need to evangelize to them, yes, but from the outside. Yeah, that was, I mean, I just think of some couple of scriptures, man. One, Proverbs 14 as well, uh, says, there's a way which seems right unto a man, um, but in the end, the leads, uh, all the ways leads to death, right? And so you may think, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm doing this for this. I'm, I'll, I'll be the one. I just want to work from the inside. I've heard that um, before, too. And then Matthew 24, 24. That for false messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. So people will say, you know, that refer to their pastors, the pastors that are, are alphas. And that was actually one, one thing that I would hold up against my wife. So for years, my wife would talk about uh, she she didn't go to uh, off to college. So she had no recollection of uh, Greek life until she met me, really. Um, and so there was a lot of things that she would question and. Uh, it was very a contentious conversation every time for years, right? And um, I would even say, like, hey, this Christian base, you know, I was like, look at all these alphas, um, there are all these ministers, all these pastors of the Greek, right? You know, they, they're doing the Lord's work. You know, of course, it's Christian base. You know, I, I, again, we always find justification for the things that we want to justify, right? We'll find justification for any bad, uh, behavior that we're doing or any lifestyle that we're living. And it's just crazy how we get so caught up into those things, but then we completely uh, omit what the word of God says, right? People want to go to the word of God when it's convenient for them, right? But they don't want to go to the word of God uh, for all things, right? And just try to be very selective about that. And that's, that ain't right in itself. Yeah. And I was just going to say, along with what Adrian mentioned, that was one of the reasons why Ashton, honestly, I, I denounced and renounced because I started seeing like too much um, and being a charter member and even seeing like the spirit of pride that was in the organization where we're the first line to come out of the campus. And it's like people weren't willing to put in the work and like the first line that's the charter line is the most important line at a at a, any college campus or HBCU. And like people are acting like we've been around all like we, we uh, are just relying on the clout. Uh, of Alpha of the organization versus uh, the Tau Zeta chapter of Alpha at Kennesaw State. And I'm like seeing the arrogance and the pride. And I'm like, we ain't even accomplished anything yet. All we had was a, 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 a phenomenal like probate that was the most attended at the time at Kennesaw State, but we ain't put in any work yet. So what are y'all out here celebrating for acting like y'all y'all are, are doing it? We, we got to get the chapter together. So I was the historian of the chapter. Um, at the time when I was an undergrad. And so I had to document like all of the events, uh, the history uh, that we were building uh, for Tau Zeta. And uh, I forgot to mention that Tau Zeta had actually got snatched uh, at another school that was a neighboring school, Southern Polytechnic State University. And so we had to grab their charter. I mean, their, um, their, um, uh, their name in order to charter it at Kennesaw State. And so it already had like bad blood that was behind it because uh, there were some hazing allegations with the Tau Zeta uh, name itself uh, in coming to Kennesaw before we had to charter it. And so uh, literally that was one of the main things is that the pride and the arrogance of people that are claiming to help the community. And I'm from Oakland. I'm from like Pantherville where the Black Panther Nation is. And it's like we're supposed to be uh, serving and also advancing the community and the people. But 
just like we see a lot of the celebrities, uh, AKA the Roland Martins and other people that are like the alpha mascots, like you're, you're advancing uh, the cause of the community. Yes. in doing your, your, um, your duty as basically this particular individual, but you're literally putting alpha, uh, as you said, Ashton above God, like you're putting alpha above literally what your family name even is your surname. You're putting alpha above where you come from. And it's like, that is your God. You're idolizing Alpha. The second thing that made me denounce and renounce is just what Adrian has been commenting all throughout the night. There's many brothers who are living double lifestyles in Alpha. Like I was seeing people that were bringing us in, a brother that was married and literally at the end of the time where we had gone and become active for like a year, he was already divorced. And I already saw a spirit of homosexuality on him even before literally um, I'm starting to see others that were forming along that, that perverse spirit. And it's like, how you married and you still messing around like on some gay stuff, on some homosexual stuff in the streets? Like that's what alphas do. Just like Adrian said, I didn't know that and I, I signed up for this. I didn't sign up for this. So I'm like, I, I don't I don't want to be associated with that type of spirit, that perverse spirit, where it's like, this is what alphas do. No, this ain't what Julian Lyle Smart Ripple does. This ain't what I do. So like I said, at the end of the day, you are who you associate with. Bad, bad company corrupts good character. You right. can't literally escape the fruit from a rotten tree. So it's like, you have to make a decision. People say that I can come in and change the organization. The organization has been going on over a hundred years. You think that you're gonna literally go and change the whole foundation, which came from Freemasonry, which we forgot to add that literally five out of the seven jewels, the founders of the organization were Prince Hall Freemasons that literally took all their oaths, their decrees, and also their pledge uh, in a Freemason hall at Cornell uh, University. So it's like, you ain't doing nothing, bro. You ain't doing nothing, sis. Like king or queen, you need to really as Adrian, myself, and Ashton are telling you, take a look at the foundation. If the foundation is rotten, then again, you are a part of that, that organization that is a rotten foundation. If the foundation is demonic, which is tied to Freemasonry, which also is tied to ancient Kemet in Babylon, as Ashton said at the beginning, then you are a part of that. You can't accept that, oh, that's, that's them over there. No, that's you. That is you that is a part Part of the organization you are in the occult you are in the frat you are in the sorority and so you got to literally have that mask those those blinders um those scales fall off of your eyes and this is the last uh scripture i was going to share too because this was one of the foundations of the organization out from among them uh, ministries um that literally uh, india bass and a few of us that literally were coming together uh to have a voice for people that came out of fraternities and sororities when it originally started was 1 John 2.19. Uh, 1 John 2.19 says, they went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest, that they were not all of us. And so again, you can't argue against the fruit. You can't argue against what are people's uh, character, what are people's integrity, what do they stand for? Because if you are truly of Christ, you are going to do Christ-like things. If you are truly of Yah, you are, are going to honor him in all your lifestyle and everything that you do. You can't be a counterfeit. You can't be, you can't be lukewarm. You're going to get spit out. And so we're here to sound the alarm and tell you that literally you can't escape that. You are a part of that organization that is in opposition to Christ. You are in rebellion to Christ. You are in rebellion to God. You are in rebellion even to the Holy Spirit if you claim to say that you have the with you because he's going to check you. Just like I said with my testimony at the beginning, you can't use that as an excuse that, no, I didn't have that check. You, you had it or you weren't with the Holy Spirit the whole time. There's only one way or another that you can break it down. So yeah. stop, stop trying to make it. We're here to tell you that you need to come out. You need to be ye separate 
and separate yourself because you are not of the true family, the true, uh, the true uh, Yahudim, uh, literally, that is going to be for the taking when, when the Messiah comes back. No, you dropped the mic on that. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, that, that's a whole sermon right there. Whole sermon. That needs to be preached. And this is why we keep making these videos. I know people get sick of seeing this, but we're going to keep speaking on it until it's literally until we die until we're out of here because this truth has to be passed on when i was when my great great grandchildren step on a college campus i need them to know the truth about what they're getting themselves into because you know when they see the the nice jackets or the strolls it's so much more behind that it's so much it is behind you know what we see on the surface so this is why we do these videos this is why we come together to show what true brotherhood should look like because if we were still in the d9 there would be shade thrown between you know us right now just because i was a member of kappa and they were two alphas you know it's not all this greek unity that they claim out to be there is right. so much division even between the own organizations there's division so true brotherhood true unity in christ is people coming together on the foundation of Jesus Christ, doing mm -hmm. the of Christ so that the, the good news, the gospel can be spread. So before we close out, brothers, I want to give y'all a moment to say, if you want to say any one last thing, one last word, um, you know, maybe there's a young man watching this right now that's been considering pledging Alpha, is about to go to college campus. What is one thing you just want to leave the people with that are viewing this um, before we go ahead and close out? Bro, I just, uh, you know, there was a question that you had um, kind of posed um, to us beforehand. It was like, what was one thing you would tell yourself, your younger self? Mm -hmm. And like I said, I grew up in church my entire life, but I didn't understand. I didn't have a firm, full relationship with with the Lord, right? To fully understand um, to the spiritual things, right? Um, but what I would tell myself, my younger self, that anyone who is interested in these organizations was um, check yourself right check with the holy spirit right if you call yourself a believer like what is that like determine define exactly what that means right and so this this scripture colossians 3 and 5 we're actually gonna read all this so uh since at once since then you've been raised with christ set your hearts on things above where christ is seated at the right hand verse 2 set your minds on things above not on earthly things um skip down to verse 5 uh put to death therefore whatever belongs to your earthly nature sexual immorality it goes on and lists all those things, right? But you have to make sure that we are walking in step in alignment with the Holy Spirit. Um, you know, and then Romans 12 and 2 are very uh, familiar, right? Uh, be not conformed to the patterns of this world. The patterns that surround you are the patterns of these organizations. They all have, uh, there's a commonality amongst all of these organizations, all secret societies, right? And the, the there shouldn't be any secrets outside of the secrets of the Holy Spirit, right? And so, um, the fact that there's all this manipulation, all this stuff is out there, just know that's not what God has for you. That's not what God has for you. It took me a long time. I hate, I hate the fact that I was in for 22 years uh, in order for me to see this, but I'm thankful that I did see it, right? And so there, were, there have been seeds and things planted and, uh, uh, and watered over the years, and it wasn't until I changed my heart posture to be in position to receive uh, that thing uh, that's what it took for me to have the veil removed from my eyes. Um, so I just say to whoever's watching this, um, really just do a, a heart check and really just stop and truly ask the Lord to reveal the truth behind it. Ask for him to reveal his truth behind it all, right? Because all truth comes back to the Lord, right? And if you're not a believer, this may, you may, not, this may not even reson re resonate with you, right? Uh, but if you're not a believer, it's never too late for you to turn um, your heart to the Lord. That's all I have to say. Yeah, I would say uh, just for me too um, is, and I've posed this question um, a ton on other videos, on other panels. We even did uh, a special edition for this on his holiday. Um, and this is in reference to the, the great Martin Luther King Jr., who is the black mascot for BGLOs and specifically uh, for Greek or, or black Greek letter organizations. Um, if MLK was to be in hell right now because of his decision to be an alpha man, would you still follow him? And this is something. Something that I pose, especially to alphas, because like 
in Alpha, like MLK is worshiped. Like he's not just somebody that's a famous Alpha, like he is worshiped. And many other people that I talk to who are a part of the Divine Nine, um, they fall in line with what Alphas do because allegedly Alpha was the first um, Black Greek letter uh, fraternity and organization, even though the Boule uh, came before Alphas, uh, which we we definitely uh, need to research that too. Uh, for those that are into research, you need to research uh, the Black Boule. But if MLK didn't make it in, or if he's not going to make it in when the Messiah comes back for his true his true bride, when he comes back for his true bride as uh, our our second coming, that we'll see him. Would you still stay in uh, your fraternity? Would you still stay in your organization? Would you still stay in your sorority? Because if you're hanging your hat on if MLK did it, forget about your pastor, forget about the entertainers, but you're hanging your hat on if MLK did it, then why can't I? Then you got another thing coming, uh, fellow king or fellow queen, uh, brethren, beloved, if you're holding your hat on that one individual who was flawed, who had issues, who we see the stuff that's been exposed on the back end, and there's even data to show, I don't, I don't um, uh, have it right in front of me right now that even MLK was a Prince Hall Freemason. Like that's even something that I've learned over the last few years is that there's even data that he was tied to even being a Prince Hall Mason. Forget about being a member of the Black Boule and Alpha, but even a Mason. And so if you're holding your hat on one individual to again be a part of your decision to potentially be turned away, depart from me, I never knew you. Then again, you have to evaluate who do you really serve? Are you serving man or are you serving Yah? Do you have a relationship with man only or are you having an intimate relationship is what we've been telling you with the Holy Spirit and also with uh, your father, Yah. And so uh, that's something that I just pose. Uh, if you are having your Holy, the Holy Spirit tug at your heart right now from what uh, Ashton, myself, and Adrian have said, you need to make a decision to renounce. You need to make a decision to denounce. There's two ways uh, that you can do it. Uh, you can send in a letter to the national headquarters in Baltimore. Uh, we have many resources and I'm sure you can reach out to Ashton, myself or Adrian uh, to get a, a letterhead template that you can send uh, to the membership director uh, currently for Alpha, for Zeta, for um, SG Row, for uh, DST, AKA all of the divine nine. Send in your paperwork to make sure that you are stating on paper that you want to be taken out of the membership directory off of the ledger. I had to do it back in 2011, 2012, in order to, again, feel that I'm not a part of this and listed as someone who is an inactive member, because there's tons of inactive members. But you need to send in your paperwork if you are truly trying to separate yourself and be separate from what you know is not right. And the second thing, get on your knees. And the same way you went into the organization, you heard Adrian and I say we had to eat the fruit of the gods and get on our knees and eat those noodles and uh, literally um, have the, the drink that was a part of taking the blood of Christ, even is what I've heard that's tied to, even the, the drink that they fed us. Um, you need to get on your knees and repent. You need to get on your knees before Christ, before Yah, and also with the Holy Spirit and ask him to come in and to repent for your wicked ways, repent for your rebellion, repent for your backwardness and your waywardness and being in these organizations and get real with yourself. Stop trying to play. Stop trying to patty cake, as my, my sister Jadine says, get real with it and get before God because he already knows. He loves you like Adrian, myself, and Aston are is saying he wants you to return back to him, but you have to make the decision to get on your knees. You have to make the decision to repent. And so those would be the two options moving forward is to repent by denouncing uh, your, your association with this organization and then to renounce uh, by again, getting your paperwork in because you need your freedom papers from the organization to really show that you're free because if you don't get those papers, you're still a slave to the organization. Just like we see uh, with the, the modern day slaves um, if you don't have paperwork to show that you are free, you are still associated with that organization. So get your paperwork, 
Uh, we're here for you all. The Kings, uh, you've already heard all of our testimonies um, come out. There's the, the Queens are coming out of the organizations um, that they're a part of. Uh, Ashton, myself, and Adrian were talking about that before we went on this podcast. Uh, the Queens are doing what they need to do, but now it's time for the Kings to come out. It's time for the men of God and also the sons of God to come out. Stop playing with it. Y'all already knows our hearts. He knows that we're struggling, but you got to take a stand and, and come out from what you know is wrong. Amen. Amen. Come out from what we know is wrong. So I would just leave people with this. This is a scripture that the Lord used to, to really pull me out. Psalm 19 and 12 says, how can I know all the sins lurking in my heart? Cleanse me from these hidden faults. Some of you are saying, well, I never knew. Well, if you ask the Lord, he he's not going to allow you to be um, you know, ignorant of information that is going to please him. So if you ask the Lord, ask the Lord is alpha pleasing him. Ask the Lord if omega, kappa, whatever, iota, sigma, ask him if these are pleasing him. I promise you there is one Holy Spirit. So there is one answer to this question. He's not going to allow us to come out and say that it's demonic and allow some of his children to stay in and say it's pleasing to him. There is one God, there is one Messiah, there is one Holy Spirit. It is the same answer. So if you just ask him, he will give you the truth. All right. Well, brothers, thank y'all for coming on tonight. Again, we could sit here and talk for, you know, 24 hours and we still wouldn't get through all of it because that's just how many layers there are to this, to this, you know, to this really important topic. But like Julian said, if you need to reach out to any of us, you know, we are here. Um, there's a community building of believers who have come out and, you know, all of us have the same zeal, the same passion to see other children of God free. So if you have questions, if you're feeling convicted, if you need help, I'm going to put all of our Instagram information in the video description below. Do not hesitate to reach out to us. You know, it's nothing for us to hop on a phone call, exchange messages back and forth to help somebody else receive the freedom that we have received in Christ. All right. Well, that wraps up another episode of The Secret Place. Again, thank you to my brothers for joining on and doing this kingdom work. Um, until next time, family, we will see you back in The Secret Place.